Hello human beings, Cacti Not Cactus is here, and today I am going to be doing a little bit of a commentary on my retracking of my roller coaster, Bullet. So as you know, Bullet is an inverted coaster located at my park, Insanity Park, and I, it has been there for a decent amount of time, probably around this year is when I put it there, and if you're a Theme Park Tekken 2 fan, you probably checked and saw that I just got a new update recently. Uh, it, they added a new inverted coaster with four seats, and the track overall looks a lot better. And today, what I'm going to be showing you is, um, my process of, you know, uh, retracking the coaster and turning it into a new version. So, we're starting out this video with some just cinematic shots of Bullet. Uh, I got VIP in Theme Park again, so that's how, um, that's how I'm using free cam. I highly recommend getting VIP if you can. It's, um, it's very good. It... Overall, if you ever want to get cinematic shots of your coaster, that's how you do it. So, yeah. So, I, I figured it, this was a good thing to include in the video, just so you can see Bullet's layout and, like, what I'm going to be recreating. And, if you've ever seen, like, the track of this type of manufacturer's inverted coaster in real life, you know that this is a little bit inaccurate, so I'm glad that they uh, took the smart path and just redid it. I think they made some huge improvements by doing that. So, and here I go, I'm going up to get my last ride on the coaster. Here we go, the final ride. I figured I, this was some, such a great thing to record because, you know, it's my one last ride on my inverted coaster. I need to, like, start pinpointing the dates that I actually, um, build these. I feel like that would be a good idea. Was um, you know. All right, here we go. So yeah, that's a pretty simple layout we have there, um, and, and now it's time for me to delete the coaster, I know, it's such an intense and crazy moment, oh, oop, alright, so now here's a little bit of me building the, um, new, putting, putting the new station in, so I sped it up a little bit, so you can see the process, and also because it just took me a decent amount of time to... Uh, modify the station to make it uh, fit this new um, wider track. So here's just me filling the rest of it out. And there we go. Placing the rest of the train. Or not the train, the track. So as you can see, this new track is red, and the trains the trains look awesome. They actually, the restraints are way more detailed, and overall, I, I just feel like they put a lot of effort into making them. So, um, right now you can see me, I'm changing the track color back to how it originally was when it was the original bullet. With gray and orange. And, the, you know, I figured I would just deal with uh, changing the train colors later, because I wanted to focus on me actually building the coaster. <coughs> Here we go, here's the time lapse of me building it. So, this part, this is probably the, like, the longest part of the process, it was tough. But, you know, I got through it. Um, I tried to make it as smooth as possible, but I knew later I'd have to go back and smooth it. So, yep, I'm just building the curve drop here. And I noticed the track on, on the new inverted coaster type is very big. If you're making an inverted coaster with this new track type, I recommend making it a little bit taller so you can just fit the whole thing. So, for this drop, I had a little bit of trouble at the end of the drop because I was trying to unbank it and I, I wanted to make it look natural and it was hard to do that. So, I had to go through a few tries just trying to make it look good. And here we go, it looks like I finally got it. I had to make sure not to hit the pathway below there. So, then, first element, we're going up into the dive loops. So, this element starts with a. your, um. Increasing like your elevation and you know 
this, this uh, the track steepness, and then you go down into a half loop to end the element. So it's pretty simple. And yeah, you can already see like the difference in how the track looks. So I figured at this point I was just gonna test it because you know I wanted to see how it looked. So here we go. And yep, <laughs> crashed. So I noticed it went a little bit slow, which would come back to um, mess me up a little bit later. And there's Sapphire Storm running in the background. And then, yep, let's let's continue the building time lapse. So next I had to go into the incline loop. This is one of the most unique elements on the ride. i never really seen an incline loop on an inverted coaster. Pretty much an incline loop is like a regular vertical loop, except, um, you know, it's, tur it's tilted a little bit uh, one way or another, so... I feel like that really was one of the parts of the ride that, you know, made it a little bit more unique than some inverted coasters in real life. And I actually made this pretty smooth, and this is the one part of the coaster I never smoothed out later. So next I had to go into the zero-g roll. Now originally I tried to bank it in a more natural looking way, um, just to make it, just to have like a more realistic look and feel. However, I realized this didn't really fit in, and it took really long to do, so I had to build it the way it was before, which I didn't really want to do that, but I had to. And yeah, this way, it looks kind of weird, and the end part of it does stay upside down for a little bit longer than I would like. However, it's okay. Um, and now we're going to get to the regular vertical loop. So this is the part of the ride that took me the longest, probably. Loops are never that easy to make. You have to, you know, make it smooth and everything, but you also have to make sure the track doesn't run into itself right after the loop. So you have to have it kind of turn a little bit, but not too much. So yeah, I definitely had to cut some parts out of this, just because, you know... It would be boring to watch me just have to create this loop over and over again. But I was proud of the, I was really proud of the final product. Um, a nice circular loop. Uh, it would probably be pretty intense in real life. Now we're going into the helix. I don't I don't know if this would be considered a double helix or not, but this is the part of the ride that you see if you're a guest just walking around the pathway. It gets pretty close to the pass. Just like that. And originally I was going to try to do like some kind of like inversion here, but then I decided I decided against doing that. Yeah, you can see me trying to do that right here. And then I was like, I was like, nah, I ain't going to do that. So next element, uh, I had to go over the pathways. And next element is the corkscrew. So corkscrews, they're always extremely different elements. I mean, not different, difficult elements to make on rides. Just because of how easily rough they can be, um, and you have to get the track just right, and I actually think I did it good, but later I tried to smooth it out, and I kind of messed everything up, so, yep, just enjoy it while it lasts, I guess. So next element, the final element, is the inline twist, so, because of the way I had built the ride, um, and you know, the different, the slightly different placement, I had to change the, um, where the track was a little bit, so that it dipped down right here. And so the the final element of the ride is like significantly rougher. Also, I had to delete some pieces of uh, Sapphire Storm's terrain right here, just so it wouldn't, uh, you know, hit that. So now we're going to see the ride, and it's probably its roughest state. I mean, it's not it's not that rough, but you know, it's not perfect either. I was I'm going to smooth it out after this. And just one second, at the test it, and here we go. Bullet 2.0. Here we go. Yeah, guys, as you might have noticed, I actually didn't make, the track didn't actually go, the crane didn't actually go all the way through. And this was a problem multiple times during the ride. It kept valleying at the same parts. I put a little bit of, a small compilation of it here. I kept changing the, the ride operations and everything, but it would just not go through. So I had to put it down really far, as you can see here. I'm changing the track friction to zero. I just had it. 
And yeah, let's actually try the ride now. Hopefully this will go through. And sorry, sorry for the chat right there. I forgot to hide UI. But yeah, Bullet 2.0, actually. And yeah, that's uh, that's Bullet 2.0. Uh, I also chose to ride it in the back seat just to see how everything looked. And that's bullet in the back, no toggle camera. And yep, there's me naming it officially. And now I knew it was time to color the train, so I figured I would make colors that kind of went with the ride's color scheme. But you know, I would also make them not just uh, orange and gray. So for the top, for the top of the train, I decided to go with a blue color. And I thought that looked pretty good with the track. Now just some off-ride footage. And now it's time for me to smooth out the ride. So pretty much smoothing out a ride is really easy for the most part. All you have to do is just, if there's a part uh, where two track pieces can be deleted and just using uh, put together using the snap node part, then that really just smooths out the ride, as you can see like I was doing here. Or sometimes it gets a little bit glitchy and it says it can't support that much bank, so you have to modify the ride and it does kind of ruin it, so you have to be careful. However, most of the time it really, it really works out. And it overall just makes the ride a lot more enjoyable. However, with the corkscrew right here, of course, it told, you can see it's red, it told me it cannot do that much bank, so I had to, it, it was a long and tedious process and I had to retract the entire corkscrew, so... That really sucked, and it ended up being a little bit rougher than it was before. So I'm kind of I'm kind of angry about that, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the video, I'm still I, like I'm still doing the corkscrew. I had it perfect before. I wish I had just changed nothing about it because it, it was perfectly fine. I just thought I could improve it, but evidently I was wrong, and I ended up making things a little bit worse. I, I mean, it ended up being okay looking. However, it was not tall. I feel like it could have been a little bit taller. It just looked elongated, like, horizontally. So then, going to the last part, it did the same thing with the with the banking problem um, with the inline twist at the end, which I should I should have just left that as it was. I should not have tried to smooth that out. Maybe I actually cut out that part. <laughs> I, yeah, I think I might have cut it out of the video just because it was... Um, pretty pointless to leave it in, you know.
And here we go. Right, now I'm going to ride the ride in its smoothest form. Alright, here we go. Bullet 2.0. The bullet 2.0 is looking pretty great. Then I figured I would do some free cam footage, so let's take a look at that. And that is Bullet 2.0. While it may not be perfect, I am still pretty proud of it, and I think it's a decent improvement on the ride that once was here. Um, see everybody, and remember, it's Cacti, not Cactuses. Stay prickly.